Well, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Today, um, I will be announcing uh, a leader of our task force that we've put together in conjunction with President Shelley of the Navajo Nation and several of our Pueblo governors uh, in the area, the Albuquerque metropolitan area, to address Native American homelessness in the city of Albuquerque. As many of you know, uh, this stems from a, a tragic incident in our community uh, with Mr. Gorman and Mr. Thompson who were murdered uh, in our city, but it actually predates that by almost uh, three years and it goes back to the year 2011 when we did a needs assessment uh, in my administration about services that were available to the Native American community living in Albuquerque. Um, and that uh, needs assessment led to an action plan that was put forward just last year. So we will be using that as a foundation moving forward uh, on this important work. But uh, the important announcement today uh, is of Mr. Sherrick Roanhorse, who will be our task force leader for this uh, very important initiative. Um, Sherrick comes to us uh, from PNM. Uh, he's an employee there. So I want to certainly thank PNM. I want to thank Pat Vincent Colon, who's the, the CEO of, uh, of PNM and also Joanne Newton, who uh, Sherry works with at PNM, uh, for allowing us to, to uh, bring uh, Sherry in uh, in this leadership position because this will take a significant amount of time uh, and resources. And, and we want to thank again PNM for, for doing that. Uh, I want to have uh, Mr. Roanhorse speak to you in a little bit about his goals and vision for the task force, but uh, I'd like to introduce him formally. He certainly has extensive knowledge uh, in the area of Native American affairs. He is a former chief of staff uh, to Navajo President, Nation President Ben Shelley. Uh, he was a po policy analyst for the New Mexico Indian Affairs Department. In fact, I, I came to know Sherry through a gentleman named Alvin Warren, who was a cabinet secretary uh, for Native American affairs for the state of New Mexico. And I called Alvin and was looking for a great leader for this. And, and uh, Sherry was, uh, was someone that uh, Alvin uh, made me aware of, so I'd like to thank Alvin for his uh, advice and counsel on that as well. Uh, Sherry uh, has been a government and legislative affairs specialist with the Navajo Nation in Washington, D.C., and he holds a dual bachelor's degree in political science and English uh, from the University of New Mexico. And Sherry currently serves as a uh, government affairs analyst uh, for PNM. So he's got a fantastic uh, resume and a, a fantastic background uh, for this this work that we'll be doing. Now we uh, we told the community that we would have a task force leader selected by the first of September, and we're certainly meeting that goal. But we also, uh, and I've talked to Sherrick about this, we would like to have some findings available by the end of October. And the reason we've set that date is because we want to have an urgency to this, number one. Number two, we're able to build on this foundation of our needs assessment and our action plan that was already in place. So we'll be doing several things. Uh, one thing will be identifying current resources and services being offered within the city of Albuquerque, uh, as well as the Navajo Nation and within the Pueblos, and assisting Native Americans in connecting with these services. We'll be assessing the potential need for additional services in our community, uh, developing augmentation to the existing action plan where we find gaps and where we find redundancies, and also trying to create a community-wide cultural sensitivity for Native Americans. One of the things that we heard when we spoke with President Shelley both here and when we traveled to the Navajo Nation in Window Rock um, was that we may have some services available, but they may not be as connected as we need them to be to the Native American population through their language barriers, cultural barriers, um, or other things that, that, that come in between people and services. So we want to do that as well, look at that situation. And then we want to prioritize uh, legislative and funding agendas uh, if we find them and can identify them in the city of Albuquerque. Additional members uh, and representatives from the city of Albuquerque will be our Family and Community Services Department, who are with us today, uh, the Albuquerque Police Department, our Human Rights Office, who are here with us today, and of course, representation from my office. Uh, President Shelley and the Navajo Nation have submitted four individuals with alternates to sit on the task force. And uh, uh, last week I met with uh, several of the Pueblo governors and already Governor Luarki from uh, Laguna the Pueblo of Laguna has submitted his appointee to the task force. Before I turn it over to Sherrick, I'll just remind people that if you're interested in serving on the task force or if you'd like to be a participant, uh, you can reach out to Alan Armijo here in my office. Uh, Alan is with us today. 
uh, you can call us at 768-3000. That's the mayor's office. Uh, get in touch with Alan or Miho. Let them know of your interest, and we'll get you in touch with uh, with, with Sherrick. And with that, and no further ado, um, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Sherrick Roanhorse. Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you all. Uh, homelessness is an issue that touches us all. And this effort, establishing a task force in Albuquerque, is an opportunity to help a segment of the city's population that has been largely overlooked. We have a diverse population in New Mexico, and this is another step in recognizing our diversity and resilience of New Mexicans to understand the issues facing our neighbors. I want to thank Mayor Barry, Naval President Ben Shelley, other tribal leaders, particularly the leadership of the all Indian Pueblo Council of Governors, including Governor Luarqui, Governor Paisano, Governor Torres, and Governor Ar Aguilar, for understanding the importance of this topic and taking a stance on a sensitive area that affects us all. The strength of their collective leadership is defined by such stances. Today, I'm excited to work on this community-based initiative. We have an excellent team in place, and we're going to build upon the existing foundation that has been created and set by the city. The city has conducted outreach over the past few years and has put forth an action plan. With this task force, we will identify current resources available to those that are vulnerable, as well as assess the potential need for additional resources. We are going to work to find solutions to better the quality of life for Native Americans living in Albuquerque, including the individuals and families who are facing tough times in New Mexico and in the city. We will do our best, and again, our goal is to look at the resources, assess the situation, and help the city um, take a leadership role on this important issue. Thank you, Mayor. We'd be happy to take any questions you might have. When might the task force start meeting? The task force will meet the first week of September. Has there been significant interest from all the other Pueblos too, besides Laguna? We reached out to the uh, All Indian Pueblo Council of Governors, which is the collective voice for the governors of all uh, 19 Pueblos in New Mexico. And, and we, we've re really tried to make a concerted effort to let individuals um, know that if you want to participate, there's a place for you. Uh, whether it's on the task force itself or as part of our ongoing discussions, our focus groups, and others. So this will be a, a large outreach. Uh, we will start with a core group of individuals on the task force, but we want everyone to know they're welcome. And once again, if you would like to participate in, in any form, uh, give us a call, 768-3000, and we'll get you tied in with uh, Sherrick in, in our leadership group. Thank you for coming what, today. What are, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Jim. What are some of the um, ideas that have come, come up so far? Well, uh, in, in, uh, out of respect for Sherrick, who hasn't had the first task force meeting yet, I'll just speak from, from my experience and then he can speak from his. I think the cultural sensitivity side of this is one of the key things that we need to look at. Uh, being the largest city in the state of New Mexico, we have a lot of resources in Albuquerque that simply aren't available in other cities. Um, when we met with President Shelley, and I don't want to speak for him, but it became apparent to me that there, there, will be, there are some language barriers potentially between some of the good services we have in the city already and people who might need um, access to those services, whether it's mental health services, substance abuse services, um, uh, issues with poverty, homelessness in general. Our Hating Home Project is a great national model, I think, at this point. And uh, we are looking at, at, at really taking that, that Hating Home model, as we did with Veterans Hating Home, and looking at it from this standpoint, whether ends up being a part of that or not or a standalone issue I don't or initiative I don't know yet uh, Sherry will help us determine that but I think the cultural sensitivity side of it, I think is something we really need to look at it's an important component uh, being sensitive to the needs and cultures of tribal members um, it's the population is a little different from other populations um, every vulnerable citizen is it's important to the city but the there's a need to understand the uh, cultural needs and whatever barriers that they may be facing. And only if we understand that can we understand what their needs might be. And even within the Native American population, some of the cultural differences exist. And so we need to be sensitive to that as well. What does it mean to you to be named pretty much head of this task force? My goal is to bring together uh, the city of Albuquerque 
um, other tribal stakeholders as well as other city Native American organization stakeholders, including the uh, National Indian Youth Council, uh, the Native American Community Academy, um, First Nations, as well as the Albuquerque Indian Center. And my whole goal is to create this conversation with the community partners, as well as our tribal partners within New Mexico. And I think by, by coming together, uh, we can have that dialogue and we can look at the resources that are available on within the city and within the uh, reservation landscape. And again, our goal is to bridge those resources so that we can help these vulnerable uh, individuals. And I think we, you know, we, this is an issue that, that involves the city of Albuquerque, but it, there's also other communities the, that, that are dealing with issues. Uh, uh, Farmington, Gallup, uh, Flagstaff, Arizona have come up in our conversations to this point. So I see this effort being a call to action both at a local level, but also for our friends in the state legislature, also for our friends in the congressional delegation. So um, hopefully we'll have uh, meaningful work for everybody to do uh, that, that comes uh, out of the work of this task force. Will, will the, um, would, would a change in administration with the Navajo uh, affect the task force as it's so far coming together? I don't, ex I don't anticipate that it's going to change anything. This is an issue that's important to the Navajo Nation. We're working with the Nav Navajo Nation President Ben Shelley's office, as well as the Speaker of the Navajo Nation Council's office, their human rights office within the Navajo Nation. So again, I don't anticipate any changes. It's a priority for the Navajo Nation. And, and, you know, I, I personally appreciate uh, President Shelley and his proactive uh, outreach to me as a mayor um, and his leadership on this, on this. and, uh, um, you know, we, we hope to continue our dialogue with him as well. And so uh, we don't see it as a, as a, as a, a hurdle that we can't get over. We'll, we'll keep moving forward because we said we would and because um, we need to. It's important.